In this video, we're going to look at the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, which tells us about how the speeds of individual particles in a gas are distributed. So if we look at the individual components of a gas uh, and how they're distributed, for example, uh, velocity u in the x direction, that's going to be some type of Gaussian function as I have on the graph over on the right here. And if you actually solve for what this Gaussian ends up being, you get a prefactor, which is going to normalize the whole distribution so that it's the integral over all of it is 1, because this is a probability distribution. It tells you the probability of what, a, what speed a gas has at a, in a given direction. So there's a prefactor, which involves the particle's mass, Boltzmann factor, temperature, etc. Also notice the square root up there. And then the Gaussian e to the minus mass of particle times uh, velocity component in that direction squared divided by 2 times Boltzmann constant times temperature. So what you get is as the temperature gets lower and lower you get increasingly the particles have lower and lower kinetic energy in the x or y or z direction and on average they're zero here. So you'll get at lower temperatures a more uh, skinny curve here, a distribution where they're more clustered around zero. As the temperature gets hotter and hotter, your distribution spreads out more and you have more components uh, at larger values, uh, both positive and negative, for this component of the velocity. If you take those three values and then you multiply them together, so f of ux times f of uy times f of uz, you'll get what is the total velocity distribution. Uh, but notice that the total velocity, of course, is going to be the total velocity is going to go from 0 to infinity, not from minus infinity to plus infinity. So if you solve for this one, what you end up getting is that <clears throat> the distribution of uh, velocities, or distribution of speeds, I guess I should say, for uh, gas particles is going to be 4 pi. Again, this prefactor cubed, because you take it from to the 1 half to the 3 half power. That was mass divided by 2 pi times Boltzmann constant times temperature. And then you have times uh, velocity squared times e to the minus m velocity squared divided by 2 kBT. So there's another factor in here of velocity squared times a Gaussian. And what this does is, uh, <clears throat> as you have, as, again, as you go to 0 Kelvin, this entire distribution will collapse and all particles will be moving at 0 meters per second. But what you have is, you have a function which goes up quickly reaches some peak at some uh, most probable velocity here, and then slowly decays with a heavy tail down to zero as you get to higher and higher velocities. So you're more likely to have particles with lower velocity here if you select a particle at random, but on average they get higher because there are, a lot, there are quite a few particles with a large velocity. And the effect of increasing the temperature, I've kind of qualitatively drawn out in this graph as well. As the temperature increases, this peak for what the most probable velocity is is going to get further and further away from zero. It's going to get higher and higher what the most likely speed a particle is traveling at as well as its average speed with a lot more particles traveling faster and faster as your temperature goes up. Okay, so some values we can calculate uh, given these distributions here. We can calculate things like um, the average velocity component in a given direction. So the expectation value of ux velocity in the x direction, that would be, according to probability theorems, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, the whole range over possible values for ux, of the value itself times the distribution so ux times f of ux integrated with respect to x. And if you took this distribution, multiplied it times ux, and then integrated from minus infinity to infinity, you would get 0. And that's because it's equally likely for the particle to be traveling to the left as it is to the right. So in every direction, particles are equally likely to travel in each direction. If it wasn't true, you'd have a buildup of particles on one side of your container rather than the other. but we know that they have to be evenly distributed. Okay, so what about the square velocity, as we've looked at in some previous videos? So that again would be integral from minus infinity to infinity 
of ux squared times f of u of x dx. It's the value you're trying to compute times the probability distribution integrated over the entire range of the distribution. And that, if you solve that integral, multiplying this times ux squared and integrating, you get Boltzmann constant times temperature over mass. So the average uh, distance, the average square distance that this is away from the origin, what your x component is, is we see it increases linearly with temperature, the average uh, square value of its uh, velocity in the x direction also equal in the y and z direction. There's no, no favored direction over, over the other. So that's what happens for components. Now what's going to happen for our total velocity u, or total speed u? If we want to calculate the average value, we again take the integral over the whole range. This range of speeds goes from 0 to infinity. So 0 to infinity. We do u times the distribution, probability distribution of u, f of u, this function up here, and then we integrate that with respect to u. Why was I doing x's up here? These should be ux's. So ignore that. We're going to make that dux and dux. That's not very good. Okay, I'll have to fix that afterwards. But see, these should be dux's up here, not x. Didn't know what I was talking about there. Okay. Continuing on with this one, so we take this distribution and multiply it times u again, so you'd get a u cubed, and then we integrate that from 0 to infinity. And if you solve that integral, what you're going to come up with is the average speed is going to be 8 times RT, uh, gas constant times temperature, divided by pi times mass of the particle, or molar mass of the particle. Square root of all of that. Okay, that's the average velocity. And then what about the average square velocity? So notice that's going to be a different value than just taking this and squaring it. So we're again going to integrate from 0 to infinity u squared f of u du. So it's going to be integrating this function but instead being u to the fourth. Why is that Okay, and again, that was a subscript that should be a superscript, so ignore that one as well. Okay, not doing so well today. All right, so if we do that integral, then the value we're going to come up with for the square velocity is going to be equal to 3 RT over M. So gas constant divided by molar mass. And... If we take the square root of this value, we'll have what is the RMS velocity, which it will be square root of 3 RT over M. And that's the same as we calculated from the previous video on average velocity of gases, or the RMS velocity of gases. So we have uh, those values, and then there's another value which we're going to find interesting, and that's going to be the most probable velocity. So we have what the average velocity is, and we have what its average squared is, but we want to know what's the most probable velocity, which is the velocity at the peak of these, this distribution of speeds here. So if you select a particle at random, what speed is it most likely to be going? You might, be able to, you might consider that analogous to a median speed, although I'm not sure that's true. Okay, scratch that. That's probably not correct. Okay, so if we want to calculate that value, we'd say df of u with respect to du is equal to zero. So <clears throat> we're saying the derivative of the distrib probability distribution with respect to speed is equal to zero. Um, that's going to be true at infinity, and that's going to be true at our most probable speed. So that is equal to zero at infinity and at what we're going to call UMP, our most probable velocity. Okay, and if you, uh, so if you differentiate this function with respect to U, set it equal to zero and solve for the value which is not infinity, what you'll get is this most probable velocity and that value is going to be, if I can copy this one down correctly, that value is going to be 
the square root of 2RT over molar mass square root. Okay, so we have these three different kind of measures for what the average of velocity is or what uh, certain important values of this velocity are. So let's look at those in a little bit further detail over on the right here. So we have our most probable velocity, which is equal to, we could say, 2 Boltzmann constant times temperature divided by mass of particle, which is completely equivalent to 2 gas constant times temperature divided by molar mass. Those two are the same because they both have a factor of Avogadro's number in there. Then we have our average velocity, expectation value of u, which is equal to, again, we can write 8 kt over pi m, which is also equal to 8 rt over pi big M for molar mass. And we have our RMS value for velocity, which is taking the square value and taking the square root of it. So that value is square root of 3 kBT over M, which is equal to square root of 3 RT over M. Okay, so if you look at what these values are relative to each other, we see that they all have a factor of uh, square root of RT over M, and then they have different values inside of them. They have, one has a factor of a square root of 3, one has a factor of the square root of 8 over pi, which is uh, slightly less than 3, and then one has a factor of a square root of 2. So what this means is, if we look at these things on a graph here, the first value we would encounter at this maximum here is our most probable velocity. Then the next one we would encounter, which is about 90% of the RMS velocity, is going to be the average velocity, which is noted by this value here. Let me go ahead and mark this one as well, right there at the peak. And then our final, our URMS value is the largest of all of them and the furthest away from zero. So if we were to rank these numerically relative to each other, it's the most probable velocity is less than the average velocity, which is less than the RMS velocity.